All right, we'd like to welcome everybody to the Wednesday, July 10th, 2024 Planning Board meeting. Pursuant to the open meeting bylaw, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any media. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. The City Charter Section 9-18 mandates that all municipal member bodies develop and adopt rules or policy for public comment. We have adopted such a policy which in short provides for citizen input on the planning board specific matters at the end of the meeting. There's a sign-up sheet that is located in the back of the room. Anybody that's interested? Uh, I'm going to do a roll call. Gloria Pacheco? Present. Beth Andre is absent. Mario Luciola? Here. Mike Farias? Present. And I, John Ferrer, am present as well. Also, we have Dan Aguiar, city engineer. Craig Salvador with the Florida Government TV. And Nina Kruger, the city uh, administrative clerk. First item on the agenda, on the old business, a street acceptance, Draper Street. Request acceptance of Draper Street extending from Globe Mills Ave to Atlantic Boulevard. Referred by City Council on May 14, 2024. So board members, if you remember the last meeting, I had requested that we table the matter so that we could get a report in from the Department of Community Utilities with regards to the existing utilities that, that are in that, that section of roadway. We did finally get a completed report from them back today and they have an estimated cost of approximately $50,000 um, really for maintenance items, um, the things that we normally see in, in any of these utilities or any street that we either own ourselves or, um, or, to, or take on. The pavement itself and the roadway itself is in excellent condition, no, no issues with that, so that there would be no cost to the reconstruction of anything um, this memo that they've sent is is very thorough, basically bringing up a few little outstanding items to being brand new. So with that, like we did the last time, we sent a, uh, a recommendation to the city council. And in that, we listed what the anticipated items or expenses would be. So one of them, for instance, was, if you remember, um, Gatehouse Drive. Um, which was a very narrow street there that, that connected um, Rock, or not Rock, Prospect, I think, and whatever the next one up is, is French. So we had sent that to them with a recommendation, but with the understanding that it needed approximately $100,000 in repairs to bring it up to even a decent standard. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, the council voted not to accept the street. So past practice has always been it's just been a rubber stamp once it gets to them. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think anyone ever alerted them to the fact that you know we accept streets that don't meet anywhere near our standards that we're basically taking on to repair for no other reason than because there's no one else to repair them. So if the private homeowners on the street are responsible for the repair of their own street. So it's always been the practice of the city will accept it and they'll fix it. We can't go fix it until it is our own. Right. So um, we started the practice with dealing with ours that when we sent the recommendation, yeah, we have no issues with it being recommended for a number of reasons, but understand that when we do, this is the anticipated cost that we'll have to spend soon. So what happens is when people ask for a road to be accepted, they expect once the road to be accepted that it's immediately going to be repaired. Well, that's not the case. It gets put on the same list as all of our existing streets, which are 30, 40, 50 streets on the current list that we have that we evaluate for different reasons before we decide to pave them. Um, so it kind of, I think it's sometimes it's disingenuous to the people who are asking for the acceptance, um, but I try to let them know that ahead of time. So I think we're doing um, a good service to both the city and the council by giving them a positive recommendation, but with the understanding that there is work to be done. Now, for that $50,000, are they going to put money in escrow, or? No, no, is that? We, we, again, none of this work has to be done. Okay. This, I mean, they go through this with a fine-tooth comb and find whatever they find being deficient. 
this these sewer structures, this piping, it's all relatively new when they had built the condominium down at the bottom of Globe Mills Ave. Yep, yep. So yep. it was all relatively new. So even when you look into the pictures, it's all concrete structures, ladders. Right, they're only asking for covers. So, and so stuff. there being, there's the one cover that needs to be replaced. This is in better condition than 99% of sewer and water utilities that are in the city. Um, and the surface itself, again, normally we just look at is the surface, what is the line, what is the grade, what is the condition of the pavement? Well, there are underlying costs like these that we need to anticipate. Um, so what I would recommend is that we, we send a positive recommendation, uh, but again, narrate and enumerate the items that are listed here. Um, so they can make that, make, let them make the determination of whether or not they want to take on streets that do have some work to be done. Normally, when we're accepting streets, it's a brand new subdivision street or a subdivision road where we've had construction inspections and have monitored through the construction process. The city is a little bit different where we have so many older streets that were never accepted, and that's where the problem lies. That's all I can offer. Anyone have any questions? Anyone who want, want to make a motion to send a favorable? favorable? We have to ask them in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. Even though there's no one here, I'm still supposed to ask. Nina's cracking her whip. Yeah, I'm just asking if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor. Oh, so is anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor or against this? Oh, no. She's coming on the corner. Okay. No. <laughs> so we're going, to, we're going to do that practice every yep. time? Even though there's no one here? Yes. Okay. That's all I know. So does anybody want to make a, uh, a motion for a favorable recommendation to send this back up to the City Council? I make a motion we, um, we send this to the City Council to accept Draper Street. I second the motion. And Mike. All in favor, Gloria? Aye. M Mario? Yes. Mike? Aye. And I as well. And I'll make sure that this memo gets attached and a little narrative of just what the cost is and if they want to read deeper into it, then they can. All right, number two on the new business. Form A, application for endorsement of plan believed not to require approval and our plan of land. File number 24-1583. Owner applicant, Dream Big Trust. Property location, 943 County Street. Assessor's map, K-19, lot 56. So this is an ANR plan requesting uh, endorsement for a piece of land that is at the corner of County Street and Earl at 943. There is currently a dwelling located at the corner and the existing garage to the rear of that building. The applicant uh, appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals and was granted relief uh, in, on April 18th, 2024. And that is inscribed on the plan that you have before you. And what that has allowed them to do is to cut off what you see here as lot number two in the 4,100 46 square feet, which is about 854 square feet shy of what is required by the zoning district. Um, so with the zoning variance in place, we are now going to be enforced. Any comments from the board? Uh, so I'm assuming they're intending to try to build on this. It, it is. So the variance, the variance allows them to build a single family home. But we don't know any of the variants, like setbacks and like that. But that will come in front of you in the future then. It has to be built in compliance with what, with what the zoning variants allow for. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the four mayors presented? Uh, I motion to approve. Mike. Second. Oh, I'll second. Mario. All in favor, Gloria? Aye. Mario? Yes. Mike? Aye. And I, John, vote. So before we go on to the next one, um, Mike, I think if you look in your package, you should have a copy of the variance decision and plan. Oh, it's just in this one. All right, so from now on, let's let's put this in everybody's package so that if somebody wants to see ahead of time, we can do that. So yes, we can side yard setbacks being the zone of the fire side yards. So we met all of the setbacks. It was just a lot covered, a lot, uh, lot size itself. Forward, we can get a copy of the zoning decision and the zoning plan and the All right. Going on to number three on the new business. Form A, application for endorsement of plan believed not to require approval and our plan of land. File number 24-1584. 
on applicant J and M Development Group Corp. Property location zero N S Horton Street. Assessor's map K-19 lot 103. So this is a piece of uh, real estate located at the corners of County Street, Horton Street, as well as County Street and Earl Street. You all know it as the parking lot for Ogilvy's. Okay. Um, so believe it or not, that parking lot that we all access in off of Earl um, actually goes through down to Horton Street, continues through from, from street to street. So again, they appeared before the zoning board of appeals requesting permission to subdivide the property. And the variance was only related to the use of lot one, uh, which is going to be the construction of a, of a three unit townhouse style building. Lot number two would be built in from compliance with the zoning uh, for a single family home in the G district. So both lots, as far as A and R endorsement go, meet the zoning requirement. Zoning relief only dealt with the use of that lot number one. So what's before you is creating two construction lots Okay, any comments from the board? If not, do I have a motion to approve the form A? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Mario. Second? I second. Second by Gloria. All in favor, Gloria? Yes. Mario? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Number four, forming application for endorsement of plan believed not to require approval, a and our plan of land. File number 24-1585, owner JKWB Corporation. Applicant R&D Realty Trust, property location 0 Tuttle Street, assessor's map B-14, lot uh, 15, I'm sorry, B-15, lot 29. So the plan before you is the subdivision um, of, again, what you all know as the parking lot located at the intersections of King Phillip Street, Tripp Street, and Tuttle Street. I'm not sure the name of the restaurant that's across the street now that was sold from the Soros family. Oh, uh, that was the, what uh, was it previously? Uh, nah. uh, and I went to school with Elaine, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, Lucitano. 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 There you go. There you go. Lucitano. How many, how many Christmas did you go to the bed? Maybe the same thing. Um, so this is dealing with the with the parking lot across the street, okay. and uh, it's located in the BL zoning district, where they're required to have 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage. These lots uh, all exceed those requirements, so no zoning relief was required for this one. This, is this was an old rainer. Yeah, we don't see many of these. No. Right? <laughs> Oh. We have a good run tonight. Of That's right. That, that meets the zoning requirement. Any comments by any board members on this one? If not, do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. I might. Motion made. Second. I'll second. Second by Mario. All in favor, Gloria? Yes. Mario? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I, John, vote yes as well. Next would be the uh, minutes of the meeting. We'll have to table these till the next meeting um, because myself and Michael were not here at the last meeting and Beth is not here at this meeting so we don't have enough uh, of a quorum to, uh, to vote on the minutes. So we'll table that till the next meeting. Uh, do we need a vote to table it? Do we need a vote to table it? Can I do a table the minutes? Okay. So Motion by Gloria, second. I'll second. Second by Mario. All in favor, Gloria? Yes. Mario? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Citizens input, I don't believe we have any. The place is packed. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll do the, I'll do the sacrifice. All right, so we got a motion by Mario, second. I'll second. Gloria, second. All in favor, Gloria? Yes. Mario. Yes. Michael. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Good night, everyone. Okay.